I just find it fun. <laughs> I find it really enjoyable to create sounds, and that's just the thing that I want to keep doing. My name is Paul Beckler, and I'm a sound designer at Electronic Arts in Vancouver, British Columbia. I am currently working on the next iteration of the Skate series. Before that, I worked for several years on the FIFA franchise, a little bit on the Need for Speed franchise, and I come from many years of music and record production. I would say for the most part, I end up recording a lot of sounds, processing and manipulating those sounds, and then creating playback systems. It's a, a weird combination of trying to make sure you're putting cool, exciting sounds in the game in the short term, but also looking into your crystal ball and trying to imagine what you need to be able to do um, potentially months or years down the road and make sure that it'll still sound good then. The involvement of movement in sound is something that tends to sort of um, enhance and create a more interesting sound at the end of the day that just becomes a little bit more compelling in most situations. What you can do before you capture something is likely going to make for a more compelling sound. There was a lot more like moving microphones and not just relying on the movement of the source. We were already aware of that when we were capturing some of these source sounds, and that's not really a common approach to this. You're likely not going to be wildly moving a microphone around while you're capturing something. Go all the way to the end of that spectrum of like, what is the, what is the most moving and how can we convey that? And ultimately you're going to end up with much more like binary, aggressive flipping and toggling between certain sort of states. And obviously that just kind of manifests itself as a glitchier sound in some cases. <laughs> We did plastic sheets, cymbals spinning, drum skin crumpling, cloth movements, metal impacts, moving like wooden carts and other wheeled kind of things. Pretty sure we were dropping ladders and just like hitting various metal beams and wooden, um, wooden sticks and stuff like that. Basically anything that we could kind of get our hands on and just sort of make noise with it. That's sort of what went into this. The two sets of sounds, the natural sounds, I wanted to be more as something that people could use that as a starting point or potentially even use those as natural or diegetic sounds for their intended purposes. And for the designed or the cooked sounds, that's really where I went in with the intention of enhancing whatever movement or whatever qualities of that sound it was naturally given. You can have so many different layers of movement happening I don't want to call them sweeteners because I feel like that's too generic. A grab bag of different things that you can you can try and you can lean on. I think there's enough variety in these that hopefully they, they can create a lot of contrast. I love Ableton. I just find it more fun. <laughs> it's especially taking these very organic natural sounds and taking them all the way to this like broken digital kind of thing. You practice an instrument for so long to become fluent with it, it's really hard to then break out of those traps or just those common kind of habits when you want to write something new. When you use a sound that isn't just a simple musical instrument, it forces you to make decisions about those things that otherwise might be assumed or just accepted from an instrument. I would hope that these sounds end up either being something that's a less common way maybe for somebody to start a musical piece, maybe beginning with a bunch of quote unquote non-musical sounds. These could either be sounds that you use right out of the box and just drop into an existing timeline or right into an engine, or they could be things that you layer in with existing sounds. But I think there's a, there's a little bit of something for everybody in this thing and hopefully people find it helpful.